your boy Luke here for another course breakdown, picking apart all the specifics for this week's menu so you guys don't have to. And last week, we had the off week, no golf to speak of, which was definitely nice because able to focus on NBA, NFL a little bit more than usual, but it felt a little bit off. I mean, those really great afternoon naps you have while watching that TV coverage are definitely unmatched. I was dealing with a little bit more fatigue on the weekend than normal, uh, but this week we're back at it here for the Hero World Challenge, which, it, which in my opinion is definitely a criminally underrated event. I mean, sure, we have a tiny field, just 20 golfers to be exact, but all of them are in the top 50 of the official World Golf Rankings. The only one that isn't is Henrik Stenson, and of course he's last year's champion, so had to be in the field this time around. We have a $3.5 million purse, and again, the field is absolutely stacked. So in terms of the venue, it's absolutely pristine. We're dealing with Albany Residence, which is over in Nassau, Bahamas. It's a really high-end, upscale type of residence where essentially it's like what we had at the CJ Cup where only people that play there are people that actually live there. It's like super exclusive. Not many people have been on this golf course before. I'd say the best way to describe it would be a desert link style course, which is definitely an oxymoron. Uh, link style golf courses are typically seaside, um, farthest thing from a desert, but that's really the case with this golf course, dealing with a lot of natural areas that are made up of sand. And then even though it's on an island or there in Nassau and Nassau is not a massive island to begin with. Um, it is not a seaside course. It's on the inland, the interior of that island. Um, so as a result, this is quite a unique golf course. It's a, a look that players are definitely not used to. Um, and overall, it's a gem to play, I'd imagine. Looks like it would be an absolute ball. You're dealing with holes that give you different looks in terms of design. Uh, and overall, some low scores as well. So with all that in mind, let's hop right into it. First off with the course details. Now let's break down the Albany course. So like I said before, even though this is on an island, it looks a little bit more like a desert course than it does a seaside course. We're dealing with heavy winds though. So even though it is on the interior, still gonna be dealing with some of those tropical winds that tend to affect some of the courses in this part of the world. But like I said, tons of sand in play here, tons of natural areas that look a lot more like a PGA West than they do, at least what you'd expect down in the Bahamas. But that's what we have with this golf course. Definitely gives you a unique look. It is a par 72. It can be played anywhere between 7,309 yards and 7,400 yards. They have five tee boxes on every single hole, which means they can give players a ton of different looks. If they want to make it easier one day or another, they're able to go ahead and do so. And if they really want to challenge these players, there's tee boxes for that as well. So going to depend on what they decide to do here. But with the winning scores that we've seen in the past, it seems like they'd like to take it a little bit easier on these golfers. Last year, the average yardage was right around 300 sorry, 7,315 yards, um, which definitely was towards the lower end of that spectrum. Last year's winner was Henrik Stenson. He won at 18 under par. The year before that, it was John Rahm at minus 20. And the year before that, Ricky Fowler at minus 18. This course was designed by Ernie Els. It definitely had Tiger Woods at a little bit of inspiration though. He was consulting on the job. Um, is obviously the tournament host this week, which is widely publicized. In terms of the grass, we have Bermuda grass greens. They're extremely grainy and sticky, like most Bermuda grass is. But because this is down in the Bahamas, um, this is where this grass originated on a lot of the islands in the Caribbean. Um, it tends to be true Bermuda grass. What that means is that it's extra sticky, extra grainy. So having familiarity on that surface is definitely going to be a boost. In terms of the size of these greens, um, for a resort course, definitely smaller than what you'd expect, right around 4,500 square foot on average. Um, typically with resort style golf courses, you're looking at 6,500 to 7,000 square feet, uh, but this is a unique track. This was definitely not meant for the weak-minded. This is an extremely difficult golf course. Um, on top of them being relatively small greens, they're also raised surfaces. What that means is that your chip shots, you're having to add a lot of pitch and elevation to them, um, which means that a lot of those easier to hit shots that are you know running along the ground aren't really going to work this week. So even though from tee to green, this is very much so a link style golf course, around the green, that is the farthest from the case. You know, with raised greens, you're not playing a lot of those shots along the ground that you're used to seeing an open championship or something like that. So that's really where you see the defense of this golf course is when you're missing these greens, there is a big penalty around the green. So over the years, we've seen some of these around the green specialists have some success here. Uh, I definitely think that's one avenue to succeed here, but we'll get into the key stats a little bit later on. I think keeping the ball on the greens is probably a little bit more important than saving yourself when you get off of them. Again, the winning score here has been between 18 and 22 under par. 
and you're not going to get to 20 under par making a bunch of pars. So again, we'll get to that a little bit later on. But around the green, definitely a little bit more penal than you're used to seeing um, at a residence golf course like this. In general, like I just mentioned, um, the defense of the golf course is into these greens. We don't have a ton of penalty areas in play off the tee um, or around the greens. Um, we do have those sandy areas, but like I mentioned before, um, not really the hardest things to hit out of. I mean, it really depends what kind of sandy area you get yourself into. Here at Albany, a lot of them are manicured. You're dealing with not a lot of rocks, not a lot of those little shrubs uh, that can make shots difficult from time to time. Um, we kind of saw that at the Shriners, where it was complete opposite of that, where there was tons of rocks, tons of ways um, that you could get in trouble if you were missing the fairway. Um, over there at TPC Las Vegas, which is just two miles away, couldn't be the more couldn't be more opposite, right? You're dealing with manicured areas off of the fairway, that kind of thing. So again, it depends on what kind of natural area that you're in. But here at Albany, they are all manicured. You're not dealing with a ton of crazy hazards or anything like that. Not a ton of rocks that you'd have to hit off of. Um, so as a result, driving accuracy is probably not going to be as big a factor this week. Um, hitting out of those natural areas is going to be all right. And let alone the fact that they're pretty large fairways to begin with. Because this is a resort style golf course, you're not going to see, you know, tiny ribbon like fairways like you'd see at a U.S. Open. Um, much more like what you'd see at your local mini course or something like that. We take a look at some of the greens. The greens can be a little bit penal. They're definitely a little bit harder than what you'd usually see at a resort style course. They have quite a bit of undulation. Again, it's that true, true style of Bermuda that tends to be grainy and sticky, which adds a little bit of difficulty to your putting as well. Um, so really the key here this week is gonna make sure that you're hitting these greens. Um, a lot of, again, the penalty is around the greens or even on the greens themselves. So making sure that you're putting yourself in scorable opportunities is not only gonna help you avoid making bogeys, but also help you score. Next, let's touch on some of the comp courses for this week. First off, we have TPC Las Vegas, which has very similar penalty areas to what we're going to be seeing this week at Albany. You're dealing with a lot of quote unquote natural areas with a bunch of sand. But the thing is, not a ton of rocks, not a ton of shrubs to speak of. While they do have some of them, they're not quite as common as you'd see at like a Shriners or something like that, where you hit the ball out of play, you're really just hoping and praying that you don't get a bad lie. It's not really the case here, so that's really why I like it as a comp. Next up, we have Port Royal Golf Club, which is over there in Bermuda for the Bermuda Championship. You get Pure Bermuda Greens, which is a similarity between these two golf courses, and of course, the tropical feel. Port Royal is a seaside course, so you get a little bit of different vibes. So not quite a one-to-one -one type of comp, but I do like the fact that both golf courses can get windy. Both golf courses have relatively nice Bermuda Greens that are, have tons of undulation. And uh, overall, I do think that it gives you a good feel, especially from the greens. Next up, though, at number one, we have PGA West, the stadium course. Definitely gives you that desert type of feel. You have some tough greens over there. Just a relatively difficult golf course where if you have your game, though, you can go out and score. We've seen that year after year. Tons of big scores, you know, scores well over 75 at PGA West, but also people taking it to seven and eight under par. That's what you're going to see this week at the Hero World Challenge. The people that have control of their game are going to be able to score, and the people that are just a little bit off, you're going to see some ugly play. So definitely like that. I think it's the best comp course of the bunch, but TPC Las Vegas gives you a good idea of what it'll look like off the tee, and of course on the greens at Port Royal. And now for our key stats, and this is the trickiest part of this video, the trickiest part of any analysis this week, in my opinion. Whether you guys run shots gained models, whether you guys use correlation analysis, or whether you're a course history buff, whatever the case is, you're going to be crap out of luck this week. The closest I've seen anybody come to cracking this puzzle to this point was using correlation analysis, you know, taking a look at the results over the years, taking a look at those players' skill sets and what correlates to success. And while I definitely use that week to week, it's something that I do on my end of the metrics as well, helps me identify some of the key stats, that is not going to be useful this week. Uh, let's first off talk about why there's problems with that because you know I'm typically a numbers guy, I'm typically all about that type of analysis. But when we have actual data, this has only been a golf course on tour since 2015. That gives us six years of tournament data, which seems nice except that we consider that the field is made up of 20 players, which means that since 2015, we'd had at most 120 players playing this golf course, which would be less than one full field event. So even though, again, it seems like we have tons of data, six full years of data, that is far from the case. We have a very limited sample size to this point. And the issue is, is that those 20 players year after year, 
have a very unique skill set. They're the best players in the world. They're all in the top 50 of the world golf rankings. They're all superstars of the sport. And what do superstars have in common? First off, they're all good ball strikers. I can't think of one player in the top 50 in the world that's not a good ball striker. I also can't think of any of them that bleed strokes around the green or that are extremely bad putters. All of them have their games together. They don't have one massive hole in their game. So as a result, trying to do correlation analysis with first off a skewed field, but second of all, 120 data points is a fool's errand. You're going to be getting data with tons of noise. You're not going to be getting anything useful like you would for a six full years of data at a full field event. That is closer to 900 data points rather than 120 at the most. There's a, a huge difference between them. Sometimes we even have more than 900 data points depending on the golf tournament. So ran aside, um, this is the strongest field in golf, and we really have to be taking a look at it on an individual basis. I think trying to take a look at correlation data, especially with the limited sample size that we have, is only going to give us noise and really skew us from the results that we're looking for. Um, so what we really need to do here, um, and really what I would try to do is try to look at shot link data, um, try to really break it down year by year, see what kind of you know skills correlated to success week after week. But the problem with that is that because we're over in the Bahamas and this isn't a PGA Tour sanctioned event, we don't have shot link data. So really we're dealing with a lot of issues across the board. We're dealing with a limited sample size. We're dealing with no shot link data. So as a result, we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board, back to basics, which is using plain old logic. We're gonna have to think, do go through some critical thinking, really consider what leads to success at this golf course. I'm um, gonna try to assemble a set of key stats to do that. So that's what we're gonna do here. Um, this isn't something new on the channel. Anytime we have a new golf course, we break it down. Um, I'm a golfer myself, which really helps with this analysis. Um, being somebody that knows what kind of courses fit your game, you know, what you have to do to adapt to a golf course helps as well. So uh, first off, it's safe to say that distance off the tee is going to be helpful. This is not a short track by any means. It can be stretched out to nearly 7,400 yards. It's also safe to say that distance will be a boost because there's not much penalties off the tee. There's not a lot of water in play here. Again, the penalty areas tend to be a little bit less penal than most desert courses will be. So as a result, definitely gonna be taking a look at some of the distance off the tee a little bit more than we would at other golf courses. As I mentioned before, the defense of this golf course is around the green and the raised greens that are smaller than average as well. So like I said, um, while some people are gonna be taking a look at around the green, if you guys do that correlation analysis I talked about with just those 120 data points, I'll say that again, Around the green is like top five on the PGA Tour. It pops at this golf course. Again, I don't think we need to put much credence behind that. And the fact of the matter is, the winning score here is gonna be around 20 under par. And are you gonna get the 20 under par by getting up and down a bunch or by putting yourself close and making a ton of birdies? It's obviously the latter there. So for me, rather than taking a look at around the green, I want guys that are absolutely on fire with their approach. I don't want them missing many greens at all. I want them setting themselves up for a ton of birdies this week. So. I think that's the way to take this golf course. I think that's the way to take this down here. We're gonna have an emphasis on off the tee play, specifically with distance. Also an extremely heavy emphasis on approach play. Last key stat I think we need to take a look at here um, is going to be putting. Like I mentioned before, these are some pure Bermuda surfaces. And anytime we have a winning score close to 18 to 20 under par, you could argue that it becomes a putting fest. Who can ever make the most birdies is gonna go out and win. And of course, if you're missing greens um, with some of the tough around the green shots that you're gonna have, being a good putter is also another way to make up for that, right? If you're hitting it to eight to 10 feet, but you're making all of those par putts, it doesn't matter how you're getting the ball in the hole, it's going to work. So for me, if we're ranking the key stats for this week, number three would be shots gained putting specifically on Bermuda grass. Number two would be shots gained off the tee with the emphasis on distance. And number one, of course, shots gained approach. That is all we've got for our course breakdown. With that in mind, essentially the player archetype we're looking for is Colin Morikawa. It's somebody who maybe not be the longest player off the tee, but he gets it out there long enough, but is the best approach player in the world. It can get hot with the putter. I mean, Victor Hovland comes to mind, Justin Thomas, just the people that are superior approach players this week, you're going to see them shine. Hell, that's why Tiger Woods was so good at this event in the past when he was playing, not just a tournament host. So for me, that's what I'll be looking at this week, guys. Of course, if you're looking for DFS content for the Hero World Challenge, that will be coming out throughout the week. It's only a 20-player field. It's not going to be quite the full allotment of content out here, or else I'd be writing about every single player in the field. We're going to have core picks out, so we'll go over my top six picks. And of course, we're going to have the Wednesday live stream 
at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, covering my projections, any last second news, any questions that you have, all that sort of fun stuff. So again, appreciate all of the support here on the channel, an absolute ton. If you guys haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure you guys go ahead and do so. Good luck with your lineups for this week if you're doing DFS. Good luck with your outright bets if you guys are going in that market. But overall, have a great time watching the event, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.